in 2001, Hasbro was waiting on the release of Armada. They had no new toys to fill the shelves or cartoons to be aired, so they imported the end of the Japanese G1 continuity, Car Robots, to the West. This would become the very first fully Japanese Transformers show to air in the West. Not only that, but with Hasbro's new direction, it became the first reboot of the Transformers brand. Hello, welcome to Jinx, where today we'll be taking a look at the most Japanese robot since Gundam, Omega Prime. But before we look at him, we start with his components, Optimus Prime and Ultra Magnus. Ultra Magnus, a god magnet in Japan, is definitely the weakest part of the set. He is 80% leg and about 70% of that is hollow shin. Despite this, there is a certain toyish charm that makes me forgive that. He is much like Victor Leo, being a glorified set of legs and armour for another to wear. But he does that with pride. Well, he didn't in the show, but we love his angsty ass for that. His head sculpt is fantastic. I love how close to the show it is, or how close the show is to the toys the toy came first. It looks bratty and full of envy, which suits his characterization of Magnus well. And he's large, bigger than both TFA and 86 Magnus, and they're big boys. So, articulation sounds and blue bolts. Obviously, this is the configuration that I have it in. But you can have it in, in well, as many as you want, really. It doesn't really matter. Because um, he can't hold it anyway. Um, but articulation um, is... It's okay, I mean, for it's time, but he just can't stand, and that's never happened before. Uh, there are a lot of ball joints, because obviously it's a Japanese beast era toy, um, but he just can't hold the pose because he can't stand, because of how much weight there is on the back. His head is nice though, I do like the articulation of his head. Um, now obviously, he's all leg. So, see, there's ratchets going there, but there's nothing going there, so he just falls down. And it doesn't help that his knees are so high up, so like, you can't really get much there anyway. Um, and that's it. There's nothing much to him. He's not that good. He's mainly just, as I said, like Victory Leo, but he does have sounds. If you press this red button on his jetpack, Well, it did make sounds, um, but clearly it's not working now because he's on camera. But that's Ultra Magnus. Not the really best of <laughs> of figures, but you don't buy it for the possibility, you buy it for what it can do. Or if you're already a completionist, or if you like his characters for some reason. This truck is so iconic. That iconic that it was used as the truck for Siege, but I still hate that figure. The chrome bumper is absolutely gorgeous and in great condition considering that I bought this pre-owned. My gold Autobot insignia is my favourite part of the truck. He's so in your face and it fits his character so well. And yes, all three Auto Brothers can fit inside of him like in that one episode. And it says God Magnus on his back tyres. I'm glad they didn't change that. Optimus is my favourite of the set. I love the design for Prime so much. The round and smooth lines along with the mechanical detail makes it like a different character but also still like Optimus which is what the Japanese convoys were. The head sculpt is out of this world. It's something that we don't see on a Prime anymore and I wish we did. The way it angles makes it feel trusting and safe, which it would need to be since he calls Koji on the phone in the first episode without having to ever met him. And the chrome on the chest is so Japanese that I can almost forget his place and where he's usually scratching during transformation. And the articulation and sounds for this one are much better than Magnus and he's smaller. Obviously he does have a head um, on a ball joint. A bit weird in some places, he does have movable ears like Commander Optimus that's coming out. The Shoulders have also got butterflies, which is amazing, but that's due to transformation for the combined mode. Um, wrist swivels and elbow joints. You can, if you really wanted to, fake an ab crunch, but like the head also gets like covered at the same time, so it doesn't really work. Um, he does have a waist swivel, which is really good, especially for a figure of this age. Um, the legs. I'll ratchet it to the side and friction there. Knees very heavy. It would have to be because these are also the uh, combined robot legs. These have ankle tilts and swivels. And his sounds are. They're very random. But that is the, well, base figure for the Riddle 1 Optimus. A phenomenal figure. 
really, really good. He also comes with a base, which he does use in the show, so it's accurate. But we all know what this is actually used for. Yes, the missile pods on the shoulders. I mean, the best super mode Optimus Prime has ever had. It's a thing to behold. When I first got this Prime into this form at the bar at TFN, I was speechless. It's a behemoth and demands your attention. The ladder can come over his shoulder and become the largest weapon in Transformers, being two cannons and four missiles in one long extendable gun. It's enormous and definitely a piece of machinery. But not only that, he has double cannons on each forearm and a tiny blaster on his shoulder. Cybertron Prime eats your heart out. And of course, we can't forget his Energon Matrix, handed down to him by Alpha Trion, causing Magnus' envy. The Arctic Lynch is kind of the same as the standard mode, but with a bit less due to how everything works. He does have shoulder articulation, the gun does come off. He does still have the butterflies, but very limited. Um, shoulders can go out there. He does have the same elbows, um, but the hands are now articulated. Uh, well, I'll say that, I mean, the thumb is now articulated. You can also move the forearm guns around. He still has the waist, um, all the legs articulated, so apart from the feet, he does not have any ankle tilts. Um, just use to how everything works there. And obviously the ladder comes over, but that is a hassle that I will not show here. But I also forgot to do the head. Um, it's very kind of limited just due to the shape of, of the entire thing, and you can move the guns on the head if you want more firepower, which this thing doesn't need. Now we have my favourite Optimus Prime alt mode, the giant Japanese fire engine. This is so cool, it screams to my inner child, make you want to go and save Dr. Onishi from Megatron's giant hand. It's breathtaking. No chrome like Magnus, but so much fun. Flanner's arsenal can still be deployed in this mode, along with the sounds. It's just so much fun and well worth the commander price he's going for nowadays, especially for the fire convoy on his tyres. And finally, it's time for the main event. Let Ultra Magnus try and steal your energy matrix as you burn alive and become the ultimate energy being, Omega Prime. This combination is the first time Optimus Prime was given a super mode of another bot. This concept has since influenced the Unicorn Trilogy and many other incarnations of Optimus Prime. The way the colors and shapes all work together to create this godly being is perfect. Whilst it can be hard to balance due to age, I presume, it still has presence. And for being a Beast era figure, this thing still holds up extremely well today. The articulation is, is very good, but it's very awkward. Just due to how he's obviously built and his age. Um, so his head is on a swivel, not a ball joint, I think it is. Um, the ears can also move, um, which, oh, the head sculpt's beautiful. Um, the shoulders are, once again, they are the standard Optimus Prime shoulders. So are the elbows. The hands are new. Um, there's obviously the guns from Ultra Magnus. The thumbs can move, and so can the fingers still has the waist and he actually can use the ab crunch this time the legs well the thighs are just obvious primes but obviously due to the weight of the magnus legs very hard to keep standing on just friction joints the knees barely move but that's just due to how it's all built and he does have ankle tilts and toe articulation which is great for a figure of his age um and obviously you can move the cannons around for blue bolts as well um, it's, it's a really good figure. Uh, I mean, it is probably the best Optimus Prime. No, even Omega Prime isn't Optimus Prime, but it's, it's a fantastic figure and I'm so happy to own it. Overall, this is a figure probably as influential as you on Optimus Prime. I'm so happy I've got to experience this figure as it's a masterpiece. I have been Jinx, and this is my look at Robinson Disguise 2001 Omega Prime. Don't forget to check my book out, link in the description. And I'll be next to take a look at another character from the franchise we all love.